Today we're on Lake Walter F. George and we are noodling. I'm Ricky from RV Underway. If you enjoy the RV lifestyle and love learning more about it, we encourage you to subscribe to our channel. Ring that bell to be notified when new videos are available. Also, give us a thumbs up if you like this video and leave us a comment. Today, we are noodling for catfish. Catfish are bottom feeders, and you gotta fish on the bottom or slightly off the bottom, but you gotta be near the bottom. So. Today we are noodling. Two distinct types of noodling. One is where you find a mud bank on a creek or a river and you run your arm up in there. But I am much too respectful of cottonmouth moccasin to uh, be sticking my hand up in a mud bank along the creeks here in uh, South Alabama and Southwest Georgia. So today we are going to noodle the other style. And that is where you take a uh, foam pool noodle and a rig that my brother has built and you fish off the bottom about 12 feet of line I'm gonna let him explain it to you okay so uh, my name's Art and I'm the best looking of the family uh, this is a uh, kind of the traditional pool noodle around here it doesn't have to be this complex uh, you got a PVC pipe pretty much sealed on both ends got a lead weight inside of it and uh, you just simply have a pool noodle on here, 12 foot of line with a lead and hook. And uh, we're just gonna let it down. And what'll happen is it'll kind of lay in the water sort of like that. And when the fish hooks it or bites it, it'll stand up, the lead will shift and you'll know that you've had a strike on the line. Now we normally do this, I normally do this on uh, sandy bottoms, but it's so windy out here. We've actually pushed up against the uh, retaining wall of the dam, Walter F. George Dam. And uh, so we're gonna try it here. Never done it here before. We might catch catfish, we might catch stripes, we might catch graphic. I'm not catching anything at all. But it's just good being out in nature. I just enjoy it. That's Beautiful great. day too. Oh, it's gorgeous. Any day you're on the border, it's gorgeous. And what about bait? What do we use for bait? We're gonna be using liver today. We've got liver, we've got uh, uh, brine shrimp that we're gonna be using. And I've also got some uh, crawfish that we're gonna use. Noodling. And we'll put that hook right back out. And that is orange. What was orange? Liver. Liver. Tell me, Art, what are you looking for in your depth finder there? I'm looking for about 12 foot of water and I'm trying to get out of the wind. We don't so, want the noodles to blow out. Uh, it'll, it'll snag them up and you'll break lines and it could blow it across the lake. The way so what's the ideal depth? 
length, you know, about 10 foot, I guess, 10 to 12 foot is what I'm looking for. And smooth, pretty smooth waters. So we're not there yet. Noodle, noodle, noodle. Okay, this is PVC. I guess it's half inch. Let me take a look. I don't know. It's PR315 PSI at 23 Celsius, degrees Celsius, NSF PW G. That's it. Uh, cap on this end, cap on that end. Just a hardware screw goes in there, an eyeball, whatever. Screw it in there and then seal it with silicone. You have a piece of lead in here, roughly an ounce, half ounce to an ounce. I pour these leads myself. Don't tell the EPA. And a pool noodle with a piece of tape on it simply so that I can see a reflection if they get away from me because when the wind picks up and the waves are really high, it's hard to see these things. I'm using, uh, most people use 20 pound, I'm using 60 pound test line, roughly about uh, 10 foot. And then I have a small piece of lead, usually larger than that, small piece of lead. I have a swivel and then below the swivel, I have about 10 to 12 inches of uh, eight pound test line to my hook. And on these hooks, I'm using stainless steel hooks. I bought those in bulk, so I'm using those. You can use, you know, you can use, uh, you know, try hooks or whatever else. But uh, yeah, you just put your bait on there and drop it down and let it sit. And of course, when the uh, when a fish hits it or when waves hit it, sometimes a boat will kick it up. They'll kick it up and the lead will slide and it will stand straight up. And you've got your piece of tape there reflecting. And uh, if there's a fish on it, you'll know it immediately because usually it'll either be running or it'll be bobbing. It's pretty cool. It's a lot of fun. Especially the problem with catfish is they all hit at the same time. I mean, we'll be sitting here for 30 minutes and nothing will happen and then all of a sudden three of them start running and if you get a really big one on there like we got the other day a six pounder um my trolling motor couldn't run him down he was running for the deep water and he kept carrying it under very much like jaws and that's what's so exciting about it you imagine that there's a big old six pound catfish on there like jaws running the deep water and that he'll turn around and attack the boat and kill all of you but you know you can use uh diving tanks and a rifle to blow up jaws now why do you put 60 pound for the runner and then for the lead on the end you put eight pound because it's going to get hung up these things are going to drift with the wind they're going to drift into logs and snap and rocks and it's going to get hung up and you can expect to lose the hooks it's just going to happen so when it gets hung up you put enough tension on it it will break the hook off but you save your lead your swivel and your your good line and you can replace that hook no problem but uh, sometimes this lead gets a little expensive these days so that's why i do it others don't they don't even use a little leader on the end of it everybody does things different this one actually has a GPS tracking chip in it also, and I can pull it up with my phone that I can actually know exactly where they are. Um, oh shit. Yeah, but that's a good idea, isn't it? Someone gave me that idea. Some of them actually have a trigger in them that when they stand up, when the lead hits, 
a little light comes on and when they're fishing at night a little light comes on and you can see that it's standing up that's pretty cool We got chicken liver, we got some crawfish, dog food, and some shrimp. We trying all of it. There's a little bit of everything out there. Hold it up. Well, we left 15 noodles out there with bait on. We came back in to get ourselves a bite of lunch and we got to notice in the weather radar, we got a front coming through, probably gonna arrive tonight early in the morning and thunderstorms, possible tornadoes, high winds. So it's time to get the boat off the lake. Brother Art went back to get the noodles and any fish that were on. I got the truck and the trailer. We're here at the boat ramp. And as soon as he gets back, we gonna head back up and clean the fish. So when you went back, how many were there? Four. Fish. Four fish? Line. Yeah. Seven total? Something like that. Gotta clean them now. Yeah, that's the fun part. Let's do it. Yeah, let's do it. Of course, you always got to have your fish cleaning tools. Good sharp knife, fillet knife, skinning pliers, and refreshment. The skinning hooks. Well, it's been a great day on the water, on the red, white, trash, and blue. Brother man, how many did we catch all in all? Noodling. Seven? Yeah, let's say seven. Got seven, got them cleaned, and now the front is coming in. Gonna bring yep. some bad weather, so we gonna go back to the beach, drink a few beers, mm -hmm. and uh, hunker down. But it's been a good day, and uh, proud you were able to come along on this video. What you got to say? I got a pee. Got a pee, okay, we gotta go, bye.